listen, um, we're doing part two now. If you're on the on the stream, you would have seen this. But if you were, uh, I watch when you upload. You're gonna have to wait till part one got to a thousand views. But if you're watching this, it got to a thousand views. So let's see what that boy Hannibal was cooking up when he snuck into the Roman Empire, man. Third time, or I'll you know what. Your mom, what? Hannibal's army had survived its famous crossing of the Alps, and he was now in Italy. With Hannibal's arrival, the Roman consul Scipio hit the ground running. In typical Roman fashion, he marched his army straight at the enemy, and Hannibal began preparing for his first combat with Rome on Italian soil. Before the battle, Hannibal wanted to inspire his men, so he staged a gladiatorial death match between captured Celt prisoners, with the winner getting prizes and freedom. He then okay. explained that the whole thing was a metaphor. A metaphor? A metaphor for, what? for what's about you? to happen. These warriors are you. You're trapped in Italy with no escape. Your only choice now is to fight and win. What about mm. the dead guy? That's you if you don't win. And the prizes? That's what you stand to gain by winning. And the fact that I've soiled myself in all this excitement? That... No, that's not part of the metaphor. <laughs> Okay. Hannibal also smashed in the head of a goat, again, for inspiration. What's that? Scipio, on the How's other that inspired? Hand, now arriving in the area, opted for the more classic route of a rousing pre-battle speech. Look at them, men. Weak, starved by the Alps, while we are the strongest military in the world. This will be easy, like 10,000 horse-sized ducks fighting a baby-sized baby. It'll be like Mike Tyson in his prime, kicking a baby. A That's tug crazy. of war between 10 sumo wrestlers and a baby. And a, help me out here, Ralph. A baby, sir? Yes. Yes, that's it. That's crazy. A baby. The point is, there is absolutely no possible way we could lose a battle this easy. So, if everybody's ready, on my mark. <gasps> Go! They got ran out like that. The battle of Tecinus was over almost as soon as it had begun, as the Romans found themselves completely outmatched by Hannibal's famed lightning fast Numidian cavalry, a key element in Hannibal's devastating double envelopment tactics. In the chaos, Scipio was wounded. Thankfully, according to some ancient writers, okay. his handsome 17-year-old son, Scipio the Younger, saw his father fall. Scipio the Younger supposedly saved his father, and in the process, earned himself a lot of daddy's kisses. <laughs> the Romans ended up fleeing the area, destroying the bridge behind them as they went. For a nation so <laughs> overtly confident in victory, Believing they, Hannibal they, to be they on easy the ropes kill, already. the Romans found themselves running away with their tail between their legs. Mm. It was humiliating. And you know who thought so as well? Hannibal. The Celts. <gasps> they began flocking Whoa, to true. Hannibal's side, just as he'd hoped. <laughs> Even Celtic hey, troops like, fighting yo. for Rome in the Roman camp began... They, they, they said, listen, he might win, so we might have to head on over there. ...to reconsider. Man... I'm thinking we should try to join Hannibal. I hear you. Maybe we should bring him a gift. What do you think he'd like? Hmm. Oh, I know. Hey, Hannibal. We want to join your side, and we brought you a present. Mm. A gift? For me? I hope it's Roman heads. Oh, please. Oh, please be Roman heads. New armor. <gasps> How did you know? Running away from Hannibal was oh, humiliating crazy. enough, but having dozens of Romans beheaded in the night. Now that's embarrassing. Yeah, that's crazy. Tachinus had been a relatively small battle, but the psychological impact it had early on was huge. And it was only just a taste of what Hannibal yeah, was the, capable the of. Despite the Romans low-key about the shocking initial loss, however, Rome still didn't seem to fully understand the danger posed by the monster now loose in their territory. The Senate was full of excuses. It's those traitorous Celts. That's why we lost. Yeah, and it was a cavalry battle. Wait until Hannibal faces our almighty legions. And our consul was bold. Once he faces our other fully... What, what is that even supposed to mean? Like, what? 
The follicled console? Then he'll really pee his pants. That other console, Longus, had been in the south all this time, preparing to invade Africa. He had seen some success, even capturing Malta. But then he heard the news. Hannibal, Hannibal one, in wrong Italy, zero. And I'm being ordered boy home. About to spin back. But, but I was going to be the big boy. I was going to invade Carthage and win the war. Well, you can be a big boy at home. No! Does somebody need a nap, sir? No! 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 And so Longus <laughs> brought his army on the long journey north. When he arrived in the area to decisively neutralize Hannibal, the two consuls joined their forces together, creating a double consular army. But the two consuls weren't exactly on the same page. Having a nice rest there, old man? I'm wounded, Longus. Pathetic. You don't understand. That's crazy. He's more dangerous than we thought. Maybe for you. Whoops. Listen, we can't just march straight at him like we normally do. We need to train our men through the winter, and we'll try again in spring. Sorry, I don't take advice from a bowling ball. Hey, hey, I'll kick your ass, Yo, Longus. Yo, jokes, come on, man. Any day now. I'm Relax. coming. Just you wait. Oh, Scipio, you feeble old man. Scipio was apparently quite cautious after his recent encounter with Hannibal, while Longus, typically Roman, couldn't wait to give Hannibal a swirly. So who would get their way? Well, when two consuls joined their forces, it turned out the Romans had an interesting system in place. They would each take turns being the one in charge. Consul 1 would lead one day, then Consul 2 the next. Back okay. and forth, back and forth. Can As you confusion, can imagine, though. when the two consuls didn't agree, things didn't go so well. In this case, due to Scipio's injury, Longus probably assumed even more command than normal. <laughs> Hannibal had Celtic spies in the Roman camp. He fully understood the Roman system and Longus's hot-headed nature. Oh, wow. And he knew he could exploit it. For goodness sake! That's What's crazy. wrong, sir? I'm trying to order some pizza. But I keep getting fed all these personalized ads about being a hot. I may have a clip uh, of the stream, the link on my Twitter. Uh, let me see. I'm not a hothead, am I? No, sir. Look at this. Butt insurance? Who would buy butt insurance? Yeah, that sounds really stupid. Sir, it seems like a lot of data brokers have collected data on you. They could sell that data to Hannibal. What? Unless you but got a VPN. Worry, because you Nor can get VPN. rid of that data with today's wonderful sponsor, Incogni. Oh, incogni. Haha, -ha. I was joking. I've been getting at you for some time to protect your personal data online. But you're a nimwit, aren't you? You didn't do it, did you? Typical. And now would you look <laughs> at that? Tons of data brokers have collected a heck of a lot of your personal data and might sell it to third parties like advertisers or insurance companies without you even knowing. Mm. Ever wonder where Sally from the Bud Insurance Company got your name, number, address, social security number, and favorite <laughs> color from? Probably a dirty data broker. We could painstakingly contact the hundreds of brokers that have our data and politely ask them to delete it. That process would only take the average Does human the link work? about 3,000 years. And that's why you need Incogni. I was shocked to find how many data brokers Incogni had tracked, potentially selling my data. But all I had to do was create an Incogni account, give them permission to work on my behalf, then sit back and let them do all the hard work for me. And since these data brokers don't... Oh, that's crazy. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me see. Stop there. Incogni will continuously work to keep my data safe with an annual plan. So if you want to protect your personal data too, go to incogni.com. Like it skips to that part of the stream, but it doesn't just have a clip though. Hold on, hold on. We're going to have to check it later. Slash oversimplified to get an exclusive 60% off an annual Incogni plan. That's oh, there Incogni. There go, there go, there go. There go. That's crazy. <laughs> Slash oversimplified. And as always, you'll be supporting my channel. So thank you. <laughs> now, where were we? Oh, yeah. Roman heads, a double consular army, and a hothead. Hannibal needed to keep smashing the Romans in battle in order to maintain the loyalty of the Celts. 
and so he was eager to fight another <gasps> battle. The combined Roman force possibly outnumbered him, mate? so he carefully Only crafted 2, a clever trap, and he made sure to spring it while Longus was still in charge. The plan began with his army getting an early night's sleep. No, I could, it clipped it. It clipped it to that one part. All right, boys. Time for lights out. Sorry, but we got a big day ahead of us. Tomorrow, we're going to massacre the Romans. Yay! Good night, boys. Dream of revenge. Gorzog, send out Jeffrey, the cavalry. Jeffrey, thank you for the song. That night, well, my man looked like Moroccan Indian cavalry made their way over to the Roman camp, arriving just before dawn. <laughs> hey, Romans. Wakey, wakey. What? What the? What's going on? Hey, Longus, your butt smells like a butt. It does not! Scipio, awaken the troops. Longus, <laughs> these playground insults are clearly meant to lure you out. Well, it's working. Send out the troops. Longus, it's clearly a trap. And I'm falling for it. Send right. out the troops. Nothing hey guys, is worse than what? having somebody on your team that can be controlled by other people, bro. Like, dog, I'm telling you, this is what they want you to do. What you're about to do is what they want you to do because they already got something prepared for that. But they don't, bro. Wake up. You're heading out for battle. What? <sighs> but we haven't had breakfast. We're skipping breakfast. I don't think you can do that. As the Romans hurried out of camp, the Numidians began luring them back to the Carthaginian camp, where these gentle angels were just awakening <sighs> from their slumber. Eat up, boys. We're having pancakes. <laughs> While the Carthaginians were enjoying their hearty breakfast, the starving Romans were still on their way. Mm. Hurry up! We have to catch those Numidians. Hey, why have you stopped marching? Longus, there's a freezing river in front of uh -oh. us. Well, get your gluteus maximus in the water. In the water! <laughs> All right, boys. Yo, him using a whip. That, hey, hey, hey. Hold on, hold on. Hey, what's going on with that right there? Time to lather up. This oil will insulate you from the cold. It also smells like lavender. Mm. There's the Carthaginian camp. Get ready to fight, men. <laughs> Sir? I think the water from the river is beginning to ice over. <laughs> I, I can't move. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. You thought war would be fun? Sitting around a nice hot campfire playing truth or dare with your friends? Welcome to the real world! Mm. Truth. Who do you like? They're waiting for them. Shit. They all well rested. They're like, wait till this boy come across this water. We about to cook him. Aaron. Ew. Oh. Hey, look guys. The Romans are here. <laughs> <laughs> Having perfectly orchestrated events so that his enemy was cold, tired, and hungry while his men were well rested and covered in Bad. oil. When the two sides covered engaged oil. one another, hey, yo. the Romans were in no condition to fight. And the cherry on top? The previous night, Hannibal had sent out an elite force of men led by his brother. Oh, and they hid and they gonna get him from the back. It's over. It's over. Listen, listen. You got your main attack in the front. Then you got another one sneaking around to get him. Hey, look, look. Your backside is not protected. You're done. To go and hide behind a bush, they suddenly sprung out, encircling the exhausted Romans, who were then cut to pieces. Once again, Hannibal's superior mm. cavalry and double envelopment tactics had flummoxed the Romans. But the key word at Trebia was control. Hannibal used his intel on the enemy and the environment of the battlefield to carefully control the conditions of battle, creating lots of little advantages for himself that That's paved crazy. the way to success. And concealing troops for an ambush? <laughs> All of these things are what make Hannibal the genius he's remembered as today. As for Longus, he managed to escape the battlefield with a small number of troops. Disgraced, <laughs> he didn't want the Senate to find out what had happened, and he began obscuring communications back to Rome. Longus, that's where have crazy. You been? We've been looking for you. My man started uh, lying. Nowhere in particular. Uh, Longus, uh, uh. thirty thousand men are missing. <laughs> Do you know where they are? Uh, they're taking a bath. Thirty thousand men, all in a bath. Yes. Longus, hey, what's yo? under that rug? Aurora Borealis? Aurora Borealis? <laughs> uh, oh, well, that's my consulship over. Good luck with Hannibal. Bye. Trebia had been a disaster for the Romans. 20 to, yo, they only lost 5,000 people. They took out four times. 
four to six times. Boy, they was in there cooking. They was cooking. And as you know, the KD ratios on Hannibal team was looking insane. More Celts began flocking to Hannibal. Rome largely lost its control. Over and you're and you're getting re uh, what is it called um, reinforcements? That's crazy. Cisalpine goal in Rome. Complacency turned to alarm. Hannibal had outwitted them on their own soil and inflicted a costly defeat. But with that, Scipio and Longus's terms as consul were over. They were replaced with two new consuls, oh, wow. Servilius and Flaminius. The Flaminius. Romans may now have begun to realize the trouble they were in and the genius Hannibal had shown in invading Italy. The Romans had expected to be the ones controlling this war. Remember, they thought they were going to invade Carthage. Now their plans lay in ruins, and they were levying 11 new legions. Yo, and uh, this whole plan came from Hannibal's dad, bro. He said, oh, we bought the... Just imagine if his dad was here to see it. It'll be gay, hey, hey. Deal with the threat. <laughs> Hannibal had completely redefined the war. But Hannibal had a little problem of his own. Things had gone well so far. But the Celts were notoriously fickle, and Hannibal needed to ensure he maintained their alliance and his base of support in Italy. Any Celts he captured fighting for Rome, he treated extremely well and allowed them to return to their homes. But the longer he hung around in their territory, eating all their food and leaving beard trimmings in their sinks, oh, wow. the more resentful they may become. They wanted to go south and plunder some Roman booty, and Hannibal also hoped to sway Rome's other Italian allies in the south to his side. So from oh. here, the path was clear. Hannibal had to move south. Just one problem. There were two main routes Hannibal could take to move south. And wouldn't you know it, that's exactly oh, what- Oh, they was about to get double teamed. Hold up, is this- Hold up, 300, 300 what, what was 300 about? Because wasn't 300, there was a battle, like the whole idea of that battle is because there was like, I know this ain't 300, I know. Well, yeah, because that was the- Dang. You know what? We need to watch that movie. We might have to watch that in Discord or something. But anyway, like, they go through this side, and since it's narrow, numbers don't really matter, right? So they're going to take this way, right? Got to. Where the two new Roman consuls had taken fortified positions. If Hannibal tried to move on them, he'd be fighting from a disadvantaged position and could be bottled in. There oh, is yeah. a third option. Ooh, tell me, tell me. We could move through this vast, impassable marshland flooded with dirty, stinky, disease-infested water that at times would come up to our necks. Ugh. But there's no way we would attempt that. Stinky right? water? No That'd way. That'd be crazy, right? The 300 Hannibal? was lit. I gotta watch the movie. I, I like watch pieces of it I've seen, but I gotta watch the whole thing. Like I told y'all, my girlfriend started watching Alexander on Netflix. Hey, look, we getting in a history bag. All right. Hannibal's four-day trek across the Arno marshlands Holiday was hell war, on crazy. earth. Almost as crazy as when he crossed the Alps. Imagine three full days unable to sit it's or lie down water. because there's nowhere to sit or lie down. Meaning four full days without sleep, slugging through heavy mud. You mm. contract cholera, your foot falls off, and Jim Bob directly in front of you won't stop pooping in your path. In fact, everybody's pooping in your path. True. Some That's delirious crazy. sleepless men would see clumps of mud and say, man, I could just sink into that. And then they would. When pack animals died, it gave nearby men a chance to rest, but only for a few moments before they were whipped back into line. Even Hannibal what? himself couldn't escape the torture of it. Hey Hannibal, if we see a Starbucks, can we stop? I need to take a leak. <laughs> what? Jeez, Hannibal. Looks like you picked up a nasty eye infection. Normally That's for crazy. this sort of thing, we just wash it out with some clean water. But as you can see, water everywhere. But it's full of Jim Bob's poop. No worries, Doc. I'll just take care of it myself. <gasps> Did he do that That'll for real? thousand dollars. When the now possibly one-eyed Hannibal and his army emerged from the swamp, they were shattered. But... He had just managed to slip 50,000 men right past the Romans into rich Etrurian lands where he could mm. replenish his supplies and his Celt allies could go crazy, securing Roman loot and booty. <laughs> As fields and villages went up in flames, one Roman consul couldn't help but notice. 
The hot-headed Flaminius, feeling it was his responsibility Hi, to hey. protect these lands. Right. And now he can fight y'all at two different times. Really? Y'all got to get the message over to them for y'all to link up. Then y'all go. But watch, she about to... Amen. Then waiting for his co-consul to come join him. He told immediately you. left to go chase... I told... Bro, what? It's like, you should know these mistakes, bro. Hannibal. Now, this Flaminius was an interesting character. He was what the Romans called a new man. He came from the lower plebeian classes of Roman society. And oh, wow. as a result, he reportedly had kind of a screw you attitude to the establishment and a big old arrogant chip on his shoulder. Picture Sid Vicious wearing a toga. That's oh, wow. Flaminius <laughs> and Hannibal. Thanks to his spies, knew everything. Just as with Longus, Hannibal knew Flaminius was just the kind of man he could lure into a trap. Hannibal led Flaminius to the entrance of a narrow pass along the north shore of Lake Trasimene. Mm. Flaminius watched as Hannibal's army entered the pass. I've done it. I've spotted the enemy. Uh, sir, that big follow us sign seems kind of like they're trying to lure you in. Bruh, hey. Yes, Gareth, and I'm taking the bait. Sir, this- Bro, the Romans got cooked two times because they was arrogant. Stop being arrogant, relax, sit back. And watch what's going on. Like the first thing, like if I, if you see the enemy and y'all were supposed to do this to the enemy, right? Just tell them, hey, let's regroup and do this together because it was supposed to be a team effort in the first place. This man's trying to play hero ball. You're done. Really seems like a trap. Yes, Glad Gareth, to be part of the stream. And I'm falling Appreciate for you pulling it. up. Daylight was fading. So for now. Hey, if you're watching the, the upload, you know what I'm saying? Come to the streams, bro. Hit that, hit that noti bell, bro. Just press the button. The Romans <laughs> set up camp. The two armies encamped across the lake from one another, and night fell over the two camps. In the morning, Flaminius would catch up to Hannibal, and he would be the hero of Rome. Mm. For now, the Romans got nice and comfy in their beds. Good night, Flaminius. And they're about Good to night, boy. Rome. Good Burn it evening, down. Hannibal. During the night, Hannibal <laughs> ordered to total stealth. stealth. As tens of thousands of troops. That's crazy. My man got a teddy bear. The wooded hills above the pass. Completely undetected by Rome scouts. Let's go, girls. Flaminius took off across the lake shore to try to catch Hannibal. Oh, As they didn't even... Boy. They're about to get... Now they're going to be stuck between water, um, an enemy line, walking into an enemy line. And if the line gets cut, it's literally... They'll be... They're done. They're done. Ain't this y'all... This is y'all's stumping ground. Y'all know the layout. As he did, even the weather seemed to be on Hannibal's side. A thick fog rose from the surface of the lake, obscuring visibility. Look at this. They're about this to is get perfect. Cooked. The mist will obscure our approach. Hannibal will never see me coming. Sir? Why does it sound like 50,000 Carthaginians are charging down the hill towards us? You mean 50,000 Carthaginians are charging right into my trap! <laughs> the Romans found themselves completely- Bro, I told you! Now they wrapped around, they, they cooked between the water- They're done. And it's 50 Boy. Hemmed in on all sides, with zero visibility in the fog, the fighting was terrifying and chaotic. Troops were pushed into the lake in their heavy armor, where they were either cut down or drowned. And That's Flaminius, crazy. who likely stood out- Like, for every one of your people, there's almost two of them, you're done! Like a sore thumb in his console attire, caught the attention of one Celt warrior. With his head possibly swirling with thoughts of how the Romans had decimated his homeland. Ooh. According to the ancient writers, this Celt... And you're running down with people who, like, are mad at what these people did. You're, you're going to get cut. <laughs> took his chance. In the three-hour-long massacre, 15,000 Romans were killed and an equal number 
captured. An entire army completely wiped out, That's along crazy. with their consul. During the battle, the Roman vanguard had managed to break through at the front and climb the hill above the fog. When the mist cleared, what they saw was a blood-red lake and a sea Ooh. of Roman bodies. That's crazy. And they only lost 2,000 people. Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Look, we ain't, we ain't get the kill cam. We ain't get the final kill cam. But the KD ratio being 15 to 1 is crazy. It's tough. Entire army completely wiped out, along with their consul, the hill above lake, and a sea of Roman bodies. Worse yet, when the other consuls sent cavalry to try to aid Flaminius's doomed legions, they too were caught and defeated. Yo, oversimplify might be the best channel on YouTube, I ain't gonna lie. Hold on now. A double disaster. Rome went into a frenzy. For the second time, Hannibal had completely decimated an entire Roman army. Romans were dying by the tens of thousands. Common citizens began flocking to the city for safety. Women waited by the city gates in tears, hoping to hear news of loved ones. This one man, having just led his battered army across the Alps the previous year, now stood less than a hundred miles from Rome. This is crazy. To this you said relax? This is a good, yo. May okay, 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 listen, listen. All I'm gonna say is the information is a banger, okay? Like, Tirzu was up there. Tirzu, y'all already know, I like the, the, the videos. I feel like I learned something, you know what I'm saying? They're cooking with this right now. Point, he had been a problem. Now, Hannibal was a crisis. Like, I feel like they give you like a book report in social studies, which I don't know if they do. You watch an oversimplified video on it. Yo, your essay going to be lit. <laughs> You're done. And in a crisis, Rome took desperate measures. They actually had a system in place when dealing with an emergency of this magnitude. They would forgo their two consul power sharing system and instead temporarily give one man near total okay. power and authority to be as decisive as he needed and hopefully salvage the situation. This all-powerful position in Rome's government had a name, dictator. Oh, wow. It's actually where we get the word. But unlike modern- Hey, hey, they created a word. Hey, come on, the Romans was- Dictators, Roman ones didn't score perfect rounds of golf or ride bears through the Siberian tundra. They held their power for just six months oh, before wow. they were required to give it up. And in Rome's hour of So, need, look, dictators went from six months to we, we gonna keep it. We keeping it forever. That's why you gotta keep, uh, that's, I got a word for you. Hold on, here, here we go. That's why you gotta set the precedent. Come on, man. Hey, hey, hey. Need the man <laughs> chosen to be dictator in 217 B.C., one of the most highly esteemed members of the Roman Senate, Fabius Maximus. So how would Fabius, as dictator, confront Hannibal? Well, Fabius understood that marching all of Rome's young men straight into a one-man meat grinder was bleeding Rome dry. <laughs> Hannibal was clearly too dangerous to face head-on One man meat battle. grinder is crazy. However, he was also stuck in their territory. With dwindling manpower and forced to live off the land, it wasn't a sustainable position to be True. in long term, and he could only remain there for so long. Mr. Beast. So, if Rome avoided battle with Hannibal, does Mr. B still have the burgers? Because I know he like changed companies for the feastables. To prevent any more crippling losses, and instead simply maneuvered around him, blocking supplies and taking out smaller contingents where possible, Hannibal mm. would gradually become weaker while they would gradually become stronger. Okay. And so Fabius presented his new idea to the Roman Senate. Okay guys, I have an idea. See if you can follow me here, okay? Instead of fighting Hannibal, when he approaches, we run away. Okay. Let's see what he's cooking, let him cook first. Fabius's strategy couldn't have been any less Roman. Romans were meant to march headfirst into battle, not run That's away why from been getting it. Cooked. It seemed cowardly, and Fabius was extremely unpopular. But there's no way that Hannibal falls for his own trick. His trick is lure them out, 
they they I'm pretty sure they used something just like this earlier. So he's gonna know. You start running, he's gonna be like, ah. Mm. Or he could have too much confidence now. Who knows? At this point, Hannibal was continuing south. He had to stay on the move to keep his army fed, and he was still aiming to undermine Rome's alliances in the south. As he went, in a calculated display of aggression, he devastated the Roman countryside and killed many Romans, all in plain sight of Fabius and his army. We're just gonna stand here? Yes. Are you a coward? No. Oh, wow. But Fabius, that's my farm. Well, McDonald, thank you for your sacrifice. <laughs> You're a hero now. Think of the stories you'll tell. Old McDonald had a, fa a oh, farm. That's crazy. <laughs> Shut up. But you know who else hated Fabius' strategy? Hannibal. He understood the huh? danger he was in. Turning Rome's allies against her required Hannibal to keep smashing the Romans in battle. He couldn't do that if Fabius wouldn't fight him. Multiple times, Hannibal tried to goad Fabius into a fight, but Fabius wouldn't bite. Failing that, he tried to turn Rome against Fabius. According to the writer Livy, he burned down all the farms he could, but any farm he learned was owned by Fabius himself. He left well oh, wow. alone. Hey, Fabius, why isn't he burning down your farm? You got some sort of a secret deal with him? Is he doing this to like flip the, hey, create distrust? Hold up, hold up. What are we cooking right now? What? Of course not. Hey, Hannibal! What? Burn my farm too, please! What? Burn my farm too, please! No! Remember our secret deal! Come on, man. Well, you gotta admit, he's a genius. Hannibal's problem, however, was that he had to stay on the move to keep supplying his army from the local lands. Mm -hmm. At one point, he entered Campania, one of the richest regions of Italy. Great for resupplying and great for showing up Fabius in front of Rome's South Italian allies. But he was caught in a valley and Fabius quickly moved to block his escapes. Ha <laughs> mm. We've got him. After he's used up all the valley's supplies, he'll starve. Uh, sir, what are all those lights leaving the valley? Is he trying to escape? Lights in plain view. Well, that's a trap if I've ever seen one. Suspecting a trap, Fabius refused to budge, but other Romans in the valley rushed to confront Hannibal, only to find cooked. the Carthaginian army was actually just a herd of oxen with torches tied to their heads. Oh, wow. They then found themselves caught in an ambush. With the Romans distracted, Hannibal's army was able to slip away into the night oh, wow. unopposed. Classic Hannibal. For all his inaction, the dissatisfied Romans mockingly dubbed him Fabius the Delayer. But the mm. thing is, Fabius' strategy was probably the best thing he could have done. He was Wait. right that constant encounters with Hannibal were bleeding Rome dry. And the time he took allowed Rome some breathing room to recover their forces when they desperately needed to, while Ooh. putting Hannibal into an increasingly more difficult position. Modern historian... Really, he's, he's pulling the, 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 the best strategy. The war of attrition. You are in my space now, okay? And once you're in my space, I can control the pace. My man hit him with that domain expansion. He said, listen, we're going to cook in here. Give me a second. Romans view Fabius' strategy as generally a good idea. To this day, the act of not engaging an enemy, but instead gradually wearing them down, mm -hmm. is still referred to as the Fabian strategy. That's crazy. But when Fabius' term finally came to an end, the Senate couldn't have been happier. It was time to start fighting again. <laughs> However, they probably had a little chat about how they were gonna go about it. See, Hannibal's tactics up until now had been very sneaky. Or, if you're a Roman, you might say dishonorable. <laughs> I'm sick of it. Every time we try to take this guy down, we march straight at him. But then, oh no, Hannibal's hiding in a bush. <laughs> Hannibal's got 30,000 men up a tree. At this point, I'm not convinced my wife isn't just Hannibal wearing a disguise. That's crazy. Ooh. Hey, yo. <laughs> Look, this time, we obviously have to switch something up. Now, granted, we're Roman, so we're going to march straight at him without thinking. That can't be helped. It's in our blood. But... <gasps> I have a proposition. This time, when we march straight at him, we do it with a massive army. Mm. I'm talking like 
80,000 men. It won't matter what kind of shenanigans he pulls. He can hide in all. They, they got to be about to be cooked. They're, Hannibal's going to cook them still. Because every time they get a little bit too confident, too aggressive, they get cooked. And that's why Fabian is really cooking, though. You know what I'm saying? Because he's really like, nah, let's wait. And they're going right back to their old ways, which Hannibal is prepared for. All the bushes he wants, there's no way he can possibly beat off 80,000 men. <laughs> hey, yo. Grow up. You know what I mean? And so it was. With two new consoles, Rome put together a massive army, the biggest Rome had ever fielded, to put Hannibal away once and for all. To gather the men required, two thirds of them ended up being completely inexperienced. Oh, wow. But how much experience does it take to be expendable war fodder? As this massive army set out in the summer of 216 BC, with the, the Romans knew they needed to win this battle. Just one victory over Hannibal would likely be enough to end his entire campaign. And this time, their overwhelming manpower gave them confidence they could do it. Hannibal had taken position at the town of Cannae, where he had captured an important Roman supply depot. With wow. Fabius gone, Hannibal knew a battle was likely coming, and he was eager to fight it on his terms. But when his men looked out at the Roman camp, they huge. couldn't believe what they were seeing. That army's huge! Mm. There's no way we can possibly beat off all these men! How are we gonna hey. beat off all of these men? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean. I think he's right, Hannibal. Hannibal is then said to have replied, Gisco, my friend, don't worry. There may be a lot of them, but amongst their ranks, there's not a single man named Gisco. This joke was apparently mm. so funny that his officers began to laugh and laugh. And when his men in the camp heard the laughter, they were like, hey, they're laughing. I guess that means we're gonna win the battle. Of course! Yay! As for the Romans, the consuls were another pairing between an inexperienced hothead and a wise Bro, every scholar. Time. Although, the main historian from this era was good friends with Paulus's family, so take that with a grain of salt. On his day of command, the rash and hasty Bro, bow that's why, like, if you if you are inexperienced hothead, but they put you in there, they want you to become wiser, but you gotta listen to the other person. You got the energy, you got the you know what I'm saying? The, mm, they just need you to listen to them. Because every time the hothead started being a hothead, the Romans got cooked. Okay? Now, Fabian, the sole one in control, he kind of, ah, ah, he weaving. People don't like how he's taking care of it, but he's getting it done. Then they go back to the two-party system, and they got the hothead coming in again, probably about to destroy the whole thing despite the apparent pleas from polis sent the army out for battle and when hannibal saw this he did the same and here comes the single largest battle of the second punic war and one of the most renowned battles in history the infamous battle of cannae oh wow I in all the pre-battle maneuvering hannibal was able to ensure his army was fighting from the south this meant the seasonal dust carrying winds were to his back. Bro, he's a thinker. He's a thinker. Yo, this is crazy. And blowing direct. And he was prepared for this. He said, they, look, if they run up, we. He really maneuvering through their space. He's spawn camping for real, or spawn trapping. Directly into the faces. Well, wherever the Romans spawn in their own place, Hannibal pulling up with a strategy. That's tough. Of the Romans, like I said, control. After two years in Italy, Hannibal's infantry had dwindled to about 40,000. The Romans possibly outnumbered him two to one. Oh their army was so big that their maniples stretched far deeper than they normally would. The Romans planned to charge Hannibal's thin, weak line like a battering ram and break it. They also chose a narrow battlefield in the hopes it would prevent Hannibal's far superior cavalry from being able to outmaneuver them. Mm. They wanted an honorable battle where pure strength rather than trickery would decide the outcome. If Hannibal had his say, however, pure strength never wins. It's always the well, pure strength does almost always win. But the strength is the strength of your mind to make the right decision. OK, trickery. I'm cooking right now. OK, hot grease. Turn it up. Might end up having a lot to do with it. 
he ordered his line to position themselves as an outward bulge, with his weakest troops at the very center. Mm. Just behind them, out of sight from the Romans, stood the elite Libyan infantry, waiting for their moment to strike. The battle commenced as the massive Roman troops smashed into the Carthaginian center. The shape of Hannibal's line ensured the overwhelming weight of the Romans hit his weakest troops mm. first, and they were we'll break too far in? No. Mm -hmm. Pushed back, Hannibal's outward bulge reversed inward, with the Romans being funneled in towards the weak. And now they can hit the cat. Now we can line up the Calvaries, cook them, spin around the back. This man is a genius. All right, come on now. That's why it's always good to be flexible. Okay. When one person is committed to one thing, and the other person can switch between. You're always going to get cooks. Center. Hannibal had positioned himself at the center to encourage the troops to hold out as long as possible against the Roman onslaught. Because while the Romans were unleashing carnage on the center, Come on Hannibal's now. cavalry needed time to do their job. The heavy cavalry on the left, after a barbaric fight, sent the Roman horse packing with the consul Paul even sustaining a severe head injury. He managed to move into the center to keep the battle going. Then the heavy cavalry turned and approached Varro's cavalry from behind. At the first sight That's of the crazy. coming Carthaginian envelopment, Varro ordered his horsemen to flee the battlefield. <laughs> the Carthaginians had won the cavalry. Bruh, you're running away? Okay, for the first councilman, he he deep in, in the trenches, okay? The other one ran away, the high-headed one that was so ready to go in the... Yo, get him out of here, man. We battle. But back in the center, according to some accounts, Hannibal's line did eventually end up caving to the massive weight of the Romans, and they began to flee. The Romans pushed deeper, and organization within the army... But now, their best... Oh my goodness. Their best... This is where uh, Mikasa and Levi, this is where they at, okay? You got, you got Mikasa on this side, Levi on this side. Listen, GG to the what is it, the Eldians? Who, who was the other people? They likely broke down <laughs> as they became a giant mass trying to massacre the fleeing Carthaginians. They didn't realize that they were playing right into Hannibal's hands. Come on. Now. At that moment, Hannibal's elite units, having done no fighting yet and therefore fresh as a daisy, turned and smashed into the Roman sides. Mm. Many of these troops were wearing Roman helmets and armor they had picked up after previous battles, and the confused Romans may not have even realized they were the enemy. As Boy. Hannibal managed to regain they were the they were an experience. composure of his center and encouraged them back into the fight, the Carthaginian cavalry swooped in from behind. Crazy. And look at what lies before you. A military general's wet dream. The total encirclement of a much larger force by a much smaller force. Mm. The Romans were trapped. Hannibal had unbelievably managed to use their own superiority in numbers against them. Rather than simply encircling them, he had actually allowed them to use their own immense power and push themselves into an encircled position. Cooking. This was the genius of Cani. And with that, the annihilation began. For hours, the Carthaginians slaughtered the helpless Bro, and the other people ain't even come back to get them. Y'all could at least was the ones to spin back, get the top off, and y'all go crazy. Y'all could have fought y'all way out. But they ran never to return. Romans from all sides. The terrified Romans were so tightly packed that at times they couldn't even lift their arms to defend themselves. The killing went on so long that the Carthaginians became exhausted from the non-stop massacre. And by the time the butchery came to an end, the grim toll spoke for itself. To Hannibal, several thousand lost. Bro, he only lost eight. 8,000. They lost, I'm gonna go 70. They lost 70,000. Romans suffered 60. <laughs> they were cooking the KD on the Carth Carthaginians. Boy, they KD ratio out this world. You put me in a lobby with them, I'm leaving. I'm out of there. To 80,000 dead 
or captured. Yet another entire army wiped out by Hannibal. Many high-ranking Romans met their end at Cannae. Polis, for one, but also 80 senators and more. 60K it's been is estimated insane. that 20% of Rome's male population, aged 18 to 50, died at Cannae. This was it. Yo, 20% of, like, your next generation gone. In, in however long that battle took. Oh my goodness. Hannibal's vengeance. The stunned Carthaginians, as they searched for their own survivors among the dead, couldn't believe the sight of it. An estimated 30,000 gallons of blood Ooh. now lay spilled on the battlefield. Rome's defeat at Cannae sent shockwaves throughout Italy. Just as Hannibal had hoped, most of southern Italy now defected to his side, That's crazy. including the second largest city on the peninsula. Wow, Hannibal, this is incredible. Mm. What could possibly come next? Next, Jim Bob. I've killed 150,000 Romans. I've turned her allies against her. That's it. That's crazy. That's vengeance. So let me tell you what comes next. Mm. Rome? We need the reparations. Surrenders. Ooh. Did they? Their territories are reduced. Hannibal was literally groomed for this. Boy, listen. He was, uh, what, what did Bane say? Uh, you merely adapted to the darkness. I was born in it. Come on now. We recover our lost islands. And Carthage dominates the Mediterranean once again. <laughs> but sir... What if they don't surrender? Jim Bob, did you miss what just happened? Of course they're gonna surrender. Throughout his campaign, Hannibal had shown himself to be very adept at reading the Roman mind. Facts. And he left that one dude, uh, uh, Fabian, he left all his crops up. So he like, he like, ah, let's surrender. I, I, I guess we didn't lose much. You know what I'm saying? That, that's what he about to do. Ah, uh, this is... That boy's a thinker. But if he now thought that Rome might surrender, it was the first time he severely underestimated them. Ooh. And he was about to discover an extremely inconvenient fact about Rome. Rome never surrenders. Ooh. At a Roman survivor's camp near Cannae, one young officer overheard some troops discussing how they would flee Rome. Drawing his sword, he threatened to cut down any man that would abandon Rome in its hour of need. Uh -oh. That officer was Scipio the Younger. But mm. soon enough, the Romans would come to it's call him the sons, Scipio man. Africanus, the hero of Rome. Hey, yo. Nah, this is a banger. This is hey, oversimplify. But I could watch over oversimplify for like some time, you know what I'm saying? I don't want to binge it off stream though, you know? So y'all let me know what the next one should be. Uh, cause listen, they are cooking on this channel. All right. Listen, shout out fat electrician got us into the military strategies and you know what I'm saying? People now, now we going further back. Listen, banger alerts, man.